This is for the weasel. I love his content, but he's gone a little bit too far this time, and I need to address it. I just watched his recent video where he broke down the nightmare matchups for every champion in the UFC, where he goes through every single champion in every single weight class, other than women's featherweight, I believe, because it barely exists as a division within the UFC anyway. He didn't want to be disrespectful by bringing up Leah Letson's name as a top threat towards a champion, but he goes through every single champion in every division and he picks out four contenders in that division that have a good chance the best chance in his opinion of dethroning the champion and beating them and then at the end of it or at the start of it he gives the biggest threat out of all of those guys and labels them the nightmare matchup for the champion of their division and in my opinion He's incredibly biased, and I've noticed this about the Weasel for a long time, and it's the only real criticism I have of him, really. I really like the Weasel's videos. I think he does the best, most unbiased breakdowns on scoring fights after they happened. We have a lot of controversial decisions that go on in MMA, where the fans think one thing and the hardcore fans think another thing. And the Weasel breaks this down on his channel on who really won, and he does an amazing job at doing this. I think the Weasel puts in more effort to his videos than I do. I think he puts the most effort into his videos, maybe out of anyone who does videos on MMA on YouTube. Okay? I like the Weasel's channel, but there's one problem I have with him. And this last video was just exposing it in front of everyone, and I haven't seen any negative comments about it either. He made the Nightmare Matchups video. I like those videos. I watched it. I was ready to enjoy myself. He has a bias towards people from the Caucasus region. And I believe the Weasel is ethnically from the Caucasus region. I don't know where I've seen that, but a lot of people in my live chat tell me this. I've seen it in some comment sections as well. I believe at some point the Weasel let people know that ethnically... He is from the Caucasus region. So that would explain the bias. But regardless of that, if that's not true, and I've just read an incorrect comment based on an assumption, then whatever. Either way, he has a bias towards that type of fighter from Dagestan, from Georgia. He doesn't really like Chimeyev too much because a lot of those Habib fans are against him anyway because some of the things that he's done with Habib and Kadyrov and some of those types of situations. Um... I want to address it in this video because he made a lot of mistakes in that video of nightmare matchups for every division. And I'm going to go through them right now. I'm going to start with the biggest mistake that he made, in my opinion. He overrates Dagestani fighters so much. Now, I know that Dagestani fighters are good. This begins with Umar Nurmagomedov, okay? It begins with Umar Nurmagomedov. He listed Umar Nurmagomedov as a bigger threat to Aljamain Sterling than TJ Dillashaw. I, I need to address this. And this is going to be the case because he said something about Shavkat Rachmanov as well that was another huge thing. We never know how good someone is until they fight a top-level guy. Chemeyev was destroying Li Jingliang. He destroyed him with no resistance whatsoever in the first round that was it. He completely mauled him. He took a step up against Gilbert Burns, and it was shown he doesn't do that to everyone, and Gilbert Burns put up a hell of a fight against him, and Chimeyev barely won that fight based on one sequence in the third round where he almost finished Gilbert Burns against a cage and rocked him quite badly. It was a very close fight, okay? The Weasel put Umar Nurmagomedov above... TJ Dillashaw as a threat to Aljamain Sterling. Umar took Sergei Morozov to the second round, I believe, and beat Brian Kelleher. That's the extent of his wins. He does have some decent wins outside the UFC as well. I believe he actually beat Sad Yakub Kakramanov as well in, the, in uh, the regional side of things, and that's a very good win for him to have. We don't know how good these guys are. And I think I noticed this bias so much in the Weasel's videos. I was watching this on my stream. My, my, my fans said in my live stream, go and check out the Weasel's new Nightmare Matchups video. And I literally said, after I saw that he put Umar Namagomedov over TJ Dillashaw, I said, I bet you he puts Rackmanov up there at welterweight. I was saying these things. 
I was saying, I bet you he does this. I bet you he has this guy over that guy. I bet you he puts Topuria and Evloev in the featherweight threats to Alexander Volkanovsky. I bet you he does. I was saying this. I knew he was going to do this. Those aren't hot takes. You know what I'm saying? I feel like the Weasel has a huge Dagestani bias, a huge Georgian bias, a huge Caucasus bias in general, and that kind of area of the world, because that's where he's ethnically from. Okay? If that's true. That might not be true, but if it is, I've nailed it. Detective Guru on the job. Umar Nurmagomedov over TJ, TJ Dillashaw. He beat Brian Kelleher. We don't know if he beats Ricky Simone. We don't know if he finishes a Sun Sao in the first round. He might take a Sun Sao to a, to a decision. That's what happened to Chemeyev. He dominated Li Jingliang. You cannot compare Kelleher and Li Jingliang. Two different levels within their respective divisions. Li Jingliang was a top-ranked guy, top 15. Keller has never met the rankings. Maybe at one point early on in his career, maybe he was number 15, 14. But he ain't a ranked-level guy whatsoever. He's like a top 40 guy in the bantamweight division. He's above bottom feeders at bantamweight. Umar above TJ Dillashaw? Above Marab with what Marab has proven already in his career? Be biased towards Marab. But of course, Umar out Dagestani ethnicities Marab. So he slides towards Umar. I think it's ridiculous to put Umar that high up in a threat list above Dillashaw. Above some of the other names in that bantamweight division that are at the very top of it. Silly to me. We move on to another problem I had in the featherweight one. And this is where it gets even worse, in my opinion. I'm, I'm trying to, maybe not even worse, as, as bad as of a problem that I had. I love the Weasel's videos. Don't get angry at me over this, Weasel. I do this about everyone. You get the light work, okay? This is a light attack on you. Nothing personal. Just the facts that I saw in your video and a feeling that I have. A strong feeling. Shavkat Rachmanov. We're not going to get to him yet. Dial it back. Featherweight. Threats to Alexander Volkanovsky. Top four threats to Alexander Volkanovsky. And Josh Emmett and Calvin Cater aren't in the top four? Holloway's there as number one. Fair play, I agree. I think Holloway does have the best chance of beating Volk. I really do. No Josh Emmett? Style-wise? Like a basically prime Chad Mendes level guy? Chad Mendes gave Volk problems. Big power gives Volk problems. A fellow short guy... Gives Volk problems style-wise. He's made to beat a taller opponent with his way of fighting. That's why he started as a middleweight and was a really short guy for that division. No Emmett. No Cater. No Ortega in a rematch after what we saw in the first fight. No Yair Rodriguez in a top four threat to Alexander Volkanovsky to make way... For Tapuria and Evloev, I kind of understand the Tapuria angle. Short guy with power, maybe he will end up being better than Josh Emmett. We don't know that yet. We really don't know that yet. He beat Jai Herbert in his last fight, got dropped badly in the first round and was getting whooped up until he landed that KO blow. Good. He's a good fighter. I think he'll make it to the top five eventually in his career. He's a very promising guy. He beat Damon Jackson. Over Cater and Demet? From Georgia. Ethnically. Shares that fan base as Habib. I just smashed my table accidentally. That's the rage that's in me. Over these takes of the weasel. But the superior one isn't that bad. If he would have snuck in. Oh, you know, these are my top four threats to Volkanovski. Um, the winner of uh, Cater and Emmett is number two. And then Superior's at number four. And the number four would have been his hot take of Tapuria being the most likely prospect to come up and have a chance. Wouldn't mind that. Evloev. To beat Volk. Dethrone him as a champion. I get he's fighting this weekend. I think he's got a risky one against Ige. I think he beats Ige. I think he'll win the first two rounds and it will have a risky third round which he might lose to Ige and win a 29-28 close competitive decision using his control time against Ige who doesn't have the strongest of grappling. We've seen that in his recent matchups. I think Evloev will be at the top of the featherweight division. 
top four threats above Emmett and Cater based on what we've seen so far? Movzar Evloev. What do you know from that Caucasus region? Name ends in a V. Weasel overrating him. Evloev lost the third round to Dawadu. I think. Looked like he did, in my opinion. Close third round, but I think he lost it. Went to a very close decision with Enrique Barzola. Let me revisit my memory. I believe a split decision win over Nick Lentz. Evloev is good at winning close decisions against opponents. He slows down massively in fights, and that's what we're going to get to. Do you believe that Evloev will finish a guy who has no finishes in the UFC, Volkanovski by TKO or KO? I think there's nearly zero chance that he goes out there and KOs Volk. He hasn't really shown much KO power whatsoever. I don't think he'd KO Volk. I really don't. I think he'd be exposed on the feet by Volk. Do you think he'd outgrapple Volk to the level where he's submitting him, where Ortega couldn't, in the tightest submissions we may have ever seen? That looks like the tightest guillotine I've ever seen. Would you bet that Evloev would submit Volkanovski? Because I really wouldn't. So I don't think there's any chance really outside of maybe a 2 to 5% chance that Evloev, at this point in his career at least, or even at adv an, ad an advanced point in his career, would finish Volkanovski. I really don't. I don't think he has the power for it. I, need, I think you need to be a guy like Tapuria or Emmett or Cater to really put away Volk by KO. And I think you need to be an Ortega to submit him. And he couldn't. Even in his best submissions. He's called T-City for a reason. Had Volk in a triangle. Volk found his way out of it. So Evloev doesn't finish Volk. Evloev's biggest weakness. Think in your head what it is right now. His cardio. I know that's what you thought of. Because my fans watch MMA very religiously. I know they do. I'm talking to him every day in a live chat. Evloev's biggest weakness is his cardio. It's on, it's on display every fight. He slows down in the third. He's puffing for air in the third round. Fair play, he fights at a high grappling pace. But he really does slow down in matchups a lot. He loses the ability in the third round to get control time as much. His stand-up looks way sloppier. He really slows down. For the weasel, and I'm just going to double-check this right now, just to make sure that I was not mistaken, because it's that bad of a take to have. The weasel, in his nightmare matchups video... Listed under strengths for Movzar Evloev, as I delay while I have an advert playing here, supporting the Weasel's channel, of course, giving him another ad view. Don't mind me. He listed under strengths for Movzar Evloev, cardio, as one of his top strengths. If you pay any attention to the sport of MMA, that's his biggest weakness. He ain't finishing Volk in a five-rounder. He ain't surviving the later rounds against Volk in a five-rounder. Volk's got way better cardio than Evloev. Won't be subbed. Won't be TKO'd. And you've got him up there. I don't agree with Arnold Allen being in there. I think Arnold Allen wouldn't be able to finish Volk and will get finished as the fight goes on because he's got a cardio problem. That's his biggest weakness, his cardio. I think the better list would be Holloway as the number one threat. Then... Maybe a Josh Emmett, a Calvin Cater, the winner of that matchup. Those two can go on there. And then maybe a Yair Rodriguez or an Ortega in a rematch. Or a Tapuria. Because I know style-wise, short, tanky guy could go on to be a better version of Mendez when he hits his prime in the featherweight division. Evloev. Strength. Cardio. Top four threats. We get it, Weasel. He's from that area of the world ethnically. You you just rim job away, as you do. And then I move on in the video. And I see, you know, the Makashev, the Chandler, the lightweight division threats that he has. Poirier's in there. Fiziev's in there. I actually think there's another guy at lightweight that's got a good chance of beating Oliveira that I can't think of right now, but it'll come to me as I keep rambling on. Um, there's another lightweight with a really good chance. Armin Sarukian. 
could be in this mix to beat Oliveira, in my opinion. Especially if he looks good against Gamrot. I think he'll definitely be in the mix. Maybe even over a Poirier in a rematch, because I don't know how hungry Poirier is to be back towards a title fight at this point in his career. I honestly think he's fighting for money at this point and looking for those big money fights. I don't mind the lightweight ones. But to put Shavkat Rachmanov... Evloev's other weakness is his chin, by the way. Second biggest weakness. But to put Shavkat Rachmanov as your biggest threat to Kamaru Usman, he is less dominant on the come-up than Chimeyev was. Look what happened to Chimeyev. I think he'll beat Neil Magny. I think he will make it to the top of the welterweight division. To say that he is, at this point, a bigger threat, or at any point, a bigger threat to Kamaru Usman. Sure, he's a big threat. He's got good takedown defense. He's got good stand-up against Carlston Harris, who's good. But as we've seen with Chimeyev, to make that statement, like, I don't know if Chimeyev has a chance anymore, but Shavkat has got a great chance. You're making the same mistake I and everyone else made about Chimeyev. When you step up in competition, it gets way closer. It really does. Shavkat might not have a first round blowout against Neil Magny. He really might not. Neil Magny's a tough guy. He'll make some problems for Shavkat. If Neil Magny makes some problems, what does Michael Chiesa do? Does he make it a bit more of a problem? What does Sean Brady do? Does he make it a tiny bit more of a problem? What does Lacka like Gilbert Burns do? With a Shavkat. Because the last guy who was dominating unranked welterweights. And ranked welterweights in Li Liang, Who was top 15. Went on to ne nearly be beaten by Gilbert Burns. What does Gilbert Burns do to Shavkat Rachmanov? To say that he is the number one threat. And to have him at number 7. Out of 10 on a threat range of danger. With Covington at 6.2. A guy who should have drawn with Usman. In the rematch, you made a video on that yourself. Chemeyev at 5.7. A guy who's just proven he can beat Burns. Proven he can beat Burns. I know he said uh, Chemeyev might get KO'd by Usman. I don't mind that take. He leaves himself out there a bit. If he can't outgrapple Usman early or KO Usman early, Usman might find those openings. To say Shavkat is a bigger threat than all of them, you're making a huge mistake assuming he's going to dominate everyone. This could age poorly. And his video could age amazingly. It's still a bad take to have right now. We just watched Shemeyev dominate Li Jingliang, a legit top 15 guy. Not Carlston Harris. Not Alex Oliveira. And then go on to have a razor close fight with a top contender. It changes as things go on. But you know, Shavkat is from a certain region of the world. So the weasel fucking rim jobs him beyond belief. So we move on. Was there anything else in this video? Leon Edwards ain't even in the video. I think Leon might beat Usman. Usman coming back after a broken hand. He hasn't been training this whole time. He's going to be a little bit inactive. Edwards is used to a bit of inactivity. He's been so his entire career. He's been training in the offseason. My fucking fans falling over right now in anger. Leon ain't in the top five, but unranked Shavkat is for beating Colston Harris. Leon almost has a perfect... Did you watch the first Usman-Edwards fight? It was pretty close. Edwards lost, clearly. But he did well for a young guy at 22 years of age, or however, however old he was. My God. I just noticed whenever the weasel's wrong on something, it's always because a Dagestani or a Caucasus region fighter, Georgian, any of those Stanis guys, are in the mix. And it clouds him. It really does crowd him. And some of the other things I disagree with, Askarov over Cara France to beat Figueredo. I get it a bit. It's a good take to... Cara France just beat Askarov, man. Pantoja had a really close fight with Askarov. Pantoja isn't in the list. Brandon Royval got smashed by Pantoja. Finished. Easy work. Pantoja isn't in the list of people that can beat Figueredo. The first fight they had was really close. Really close. Figueredo won based on a knockdown in round one at the end of it. And a couple of big shots that rocked Pantoja in another round as well. That was a really, really close back and forth scrap on the feet that they had at UFC 240, I believe. Holloway versus Edgar in UFC fight. UFC pay-per-view in Edmonton, Canada. 
Holloway versus Edgar on the prelims. Figueredo versus Pantoja won. A razor close fight they had. But Figueredo came out on top because of the bigger moments with the power. Pantoja can win that matchup. Roy Val over Pantoja. Roy Val is chinny. He'd get chinned by Figueredo. I really believe that. And it's just like, I noticed a bias, man. Didn't know Luke and Burns were friends. That's classic information. And I'm just realizing that the weasel, who I really look up to in terms of the effort that he puts into his videos and the knowledge that he might have, he makes good predictions. He's got a good prediction rate. He has. He's good at what he does. But when it comes to Dagestanis and Georgians, people say I'm anti them. I'm picking them to win. I'm just not saying they're gods sent from above. And I'm anti Dagestani for that. That's their take on me. To have Umar over Dillashaw to beat Aljo, let alone the other names at Bantamweight that are already proven. To have Umar over Dillashaw to beat Aljo. Evloev and... Uh, Evloev over Emmett and Cater to beat Volk. If you are an MMA fan, left out Leon Edwards in the welterweight threats to Usman and had Shavkat at number one, knowing what we know just happened to Chimeyev after dominating early on in his career, those are the big ones that I have a problem with. But beyond that, though, there's an evidence of a lack of knowledge of the sport, in my opinion. If I asked any, any MMA fan in the world that genuinely watches the sport closely... What's Evloev's biggest weakness? If you actually understand MMA and watch it like you think and know what you're talking about. If you actually pay attention to MMA like a real fan with high knowledge of the sport. What's the biggest weakness of Evloev? What's his only problem, if any? It's his cardio. And you listed that as his top strength. One of his top strengths. And you've got to watch out for the cardio of Evloev. It's his biggest weakness. He's shown it so many times. His second biggest weakness, or as big of a weakness maybe, I could excuse you if you said this instead. He seems a bit chinny, doesn't take shots too well, and often does leave his chin up in the air at times. Chin management is his second biggest weakness, in my opinion. But if you're an MMA fan, name a top two weaknesses of Evloev. You'd say, don't really protect his chin too well at times. Gets a bit sloppy in the third, where he gasses out a lot of the time. I'd say his biggest weakness is him gassing for not having enough cardio for the division. And his strength. That, that, just, that, that was a big sign. Like, oh, you're going against... The facts, just to put Evloev in the video. And I get it, man. Like, you can get a lot of views pandering to Habib's fan base. And he does a lot of videos on Habib and that type of fighters. And has a lot of amazing things to say about people from that region. All of Habib's fans love the weasel. I, If someone could correct me in the comments, I think he is ethnically from that area. So there might be a bit of that pride in him. I get it. But that's the biggest problem I had with a video. I it, and I knew it. I called it on stream. If you're in my stream, you can attest to this at the time that I did it. I said, I bet you he has Tapuria and somehow Evloev in the top four threats. Oh, what's he going to have at welterweight? Shavkat? I was calling, is it, calling it as I went through it. <sighs> Evloev, top four threats. No Emmett, no Kato. They're perfect to beat Volk. They're the big threat. They're second to Holloway, I think. The power, the boxing. I know they could get checked up and Ige did well against Emmett and arguably could have won and that's not a good look. But power-wise, who's going to shut the lights out on Volk? Who has that chance to really just stop all that technical stuff and just put him out? It's Emmett or Cater. It's the winner of that. Evloev in that. In that. Shavkat, number one at welterweight after what we've just learned about Chimeyev. Like, this is Umar above... Di There's so many. There's so many bad takes. I wish I could say one. Who are your top four threats to uh, Aljamain Sterling? 
Uh, Aldo. Yeah, it makes sense. Aldo's a good style matchup against him. Yan in a rematch. Yeah, it makes sense. The second fight was really close. Yan was on his way to winning the first one. I could see him beating Aljo in a rematch. Um, you know, uh, Dillashaw's in that mix as well. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, who's another threat? Uh, Umar over Dillashaw. How much is Habib paying you? How much is Ali Abdulaziz paying you? That's what I want to know. Umar above Dillashaw. Yan in a re... Piotr Yan, proven, undeniable, beat Aldo, who's number one on your list. I know style-wise it's different on who's a threat to Aldo. But Yan at 7 out of 10 threat level. And Umar at 6.8. I want to see how Umar does against Akila Phillips. Or in a sun sal. Or one of these level guys. Before we start saying this. This is crazy talk. This is fucking crazy. I'm surprised fucking Makayev won over Moreno at flyweight to be honest. I'll see you later. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Click that button up there. Uh, I just had to get all of that out. Because I couldn't hold it. It's too much weasel. That's the one problem you have. You make great videos. Respect the videos. You put a lot of effort in. You need to stop fucking... You wish you were in that bathtub with Habib and his cousins. That's all I can imagine. Jesus.